So the question, Steve, was about uh, uh, Marshall intention or uh, maybe even like Marshall thinking as we practice. And, you know, here we're talking about Tai Chi Chuan, but this could apply to Yi Chuan or Qigong or something as well. So it's, it's certainly a, a common consideration for somebody doing Tai Chi Chuan. And uh, we certainly get people that say, uh, well, do you do Tai Chi for health or do you do it for self-defense? Well, I do Tai Chi only for health. I know people do it for self-defense or some version. Um, my take is that um, all of it is for health. Um, that's not to say that uh, none of it is for self-defense. What I mean is that if you're doing Tai Chi for health and it's for your GI tract and uh, you know the, the uh, uh, stimulation of your nervous system and the, the movement of your joints and the development of posture and breath, and, you know, uh, that's for health. Okay, it helps my arthritis and my colitis and whatever, right? Great. But that's kind of chronic health in, in, in the sense that, that that's an ongoing thing. The, the health of your hamstrings, the, the, uh, the uh, movement of fluids through the area of bursitis, the uh, stimulation of bone density or whatever, whatever's going on. That's all chronic. Uh, I don't mean chronic in the normal healthcare concern of I have this chronic issue with my elbow, meaning ongoing. Uh, what I mean is the ongoing consideration of the health of the body, circulation, posture, activation, range of motion, that sort of thing. So Tai Chi for health is addressing your health in this chronic way. When you're walking down the street and a guy jumps out to grab your cell phone because you're sort of mindlessly not aware of your surroundings and you have a brand new phone and you're <laughs> whatever you're gonna do, now you have an acute healthcare concern. Right now, this guy's choking me, or bending my arm back to get my phone, or punching me, or whatever. It's still health. It's very acute. We need to do this right now. But that's an acute healthcare concern. Um, and so I think of Tai Chi as it, all of it is about health. And the chronic health is a bigger part of your life that's every day all the time. I don't think you're getting mugged very often. And even when you do, it's a very brief thing, although it might have lasting effects. Um, and I don't think you're picking fights all the time either. So the acute stuff, it tends to be um, a, a small part of your life in terms of uh, time. Uh, but it might be a very important time in your life, right? That's when you lose your life or you know your jaw is broken and you have five surgeries over four years. Um, so it's very important and it's easier to lose sight of because how often does that really happen? I'm just going to call if I get in trouble. I don't go to those places. I don't hang out in those kind of bars. I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. It's very easy to give it short shrift, which people do. So um, then people will say, look, I just don't really have an interest in learning how to fight. It isn't where my brain is. It's not my personality makeup. And I don't necessarily need to teach everybody to fight and then push it and test it. That's not necessarily important to you. And if I push it where somebody isn't that interested, I'm going to lose them as a student and I don't get to help them with those chronic healthcare things. So I want to push the importance of it to help them understand the importance. But how much they take me up on it and say, okay, let's put some gloves on and get better at this. I, I don't want to push them that far. Um, I'll illuminate that aspect of things and offer it and connect to it and communicate to them as I can where I can and if they get to the point where hey I'd like to be pushed more let's pressure test this for example great okay we're into a different mode and that's fine but if you're here 10 years in a row every week and you want to work on the qigong and the philosophy and the gentle movement of the body that sounds like tai chi to you it's also reasonable but when we talk about 
um, hey, what's the application of this? Well, you take the guy's elbow and you smash it, and you know, that's what we're really doing on this or something. Very easy for people to say, ah, my brain isn't, if this was a TV show, I'd click it to something else that's more to my liking. I don't want to spend my time thinking about breaking people's elbows. I don't want to have somebody do it to me in class, so I have to tap. I, I just want to be at one with the bees and the clouds and the breath of the one sweet Tao. That's how I do my Tai Chi. That's fine too. What I will say is that everything that we're doing in terms of, well, this could be a punch to the kidney, and what you're doing here is uprooting a guy so that he turns away from you and you have his back so you can push or whatever that application is. Every one of these applications gets used in your real life, right? So if I'm doing this, which I probably do whatever, 10, 25 times a day, there's a door and you're closing it. Perhaps as you turn away, perhaps you actually turn into it to make sure it clicks as an example. And I'm just, I'm just practicing brush knee. Like that's what brush knee is. And when I'm doing brush knee, I might very well be thinking about throwing the guy over my leg so he, you know, uh, rear over tea kettle and then I can lotus kick him or whatever. And you might just be thinking, oh, this is sweeping the energy across the lower jowl and then opening up the heart space. They're both reasonable, they're both fine. But we are teaching you how to close a car door. Maybe a car, car door that's on the heavy side or you're a little bit um, um, uh, inattentive to, but you need to do it, right? Like I didn't stop and face it. I'm kind of doing, I'm getting out of my car, I'm holding groceries, looking at my phone and, you know, so I'd like to be a little bit more efficient because I haven't directed all of my attention to doing that perfectly. It's part of what I'm doing. So as we go through the form and we think, what is this kick doing? What is this movement doing? What is this movement doing? I can look through my life and say, you know, is this me closing the, the cabinet door under the sink? as you know, I, that's been open, so I'm closing that and I'm moving towards the cutting board. Um, what are all these things that are happening in my life? Am I practicing using my steering wheel in a way that relates to more of my core than simply, uh, you know, sort of the forearms and the fingers? Can I connect this to the shoulder girdle? Can I connect it to the ribs and upper spine? I can't use my legs if I'm driving. There's a chipmunk there. So um, when we think about what's this for, it's very easy, particularly for like a, like a long time martial artist like me to, well, if you have a guy coming from this angle and it's a downward thing, but he has a knife, that's what this move is for. Yeah, it could be for that, but it could also be me in my cellar and I'm moving a cobweb and trying to cover the light that's gonna blind me as I look and then I'm reaching for something on my, you know, my workbench, right? And it could be <laughs> turning a guy open, uprooting him and striking to labor 13, right? That, fine. So as we go through the form, we could, should be able to see everything that you might have been taught. This is a punch to the liver and this is a elbow to the sternum and this is something to pH that we're doing. Where else could that be used in your life? And the, the work of doing these applications is develop efficiencies, efficiencies of consciousness, efficiency, efficiencies of movement, efficiencies of um, sort of integration of body and breath coordination. And I'm going to be doing, I expect in my life, and so far it's been true, doing this to doors many thousands of times more often than I have to do it to the guy who tries a front kick on me in the bar fight I'm in, I guess, where I do the same move. And I only get the one chance in my life to do that in a bar fight, probably, the life I live. And it really is gonna be important <laughs> that, I, that it works. But I practice it 17,000 times on every door because I'm being conscious of what it is I'm practicing. It doesn't mean I'm I'm buying into the fantasy of, I'm learning to fight, I do Tai Chi. 
I could be learning to fight. In fact, I would argue that I am. But first, I'm learning how to move my world, to operate in my world, to exist in my world. How do I sit? How do I get up? How often do I, you know, move the dog bowl a little bit over because the dog was drinking and kind of moved it and I'm doing this in my kitchen and then I'm going to cut my carrots or whatever I'm doing. How often in my life am I turning things, lifting things, dragging things, raking things, lifting things, closing, opening things? Like where am I doing that? And if I do that less than consciously and I just kind of, you know, whatever it is I happen to be doing, lift something, push, drag, paint, rake, stack, cover, twist, turn, open, close. If I do those less than consciousness, I'm not really practicing when that's a block or a punch or a break or an uproot or whatever. And then if I do need it in that acute self-care place, I'm less practiced at it. I'm less facile. I'm less, it's less integrated. It, and I need to harness more of my current consciousness, my waking consciousness to try and make it work because I haven't really practiced it. So I don't think we need to adopt a, I'm all in, show me how to fight. Let every move is a killing move where I, you know, this is, I don't have, some people do that and there's nothing wrong with that. That's your focus and your Tai Chi Chuan, fine. But I don't think we have to argue that I have to adopt that and now I'm punching a guy and now I'm releasing the grab and now I'm going in. It could just be like, I'm offering you a cup of coffee across the table and then I'm opening the curtains, you know, to take in the day and the, you can look through everything there and develop the ability to visualize the movements of the Tai Chi Chuan form or actions or postures as regular life things. This is me planting, this is me sifting flour, or, I don't know, whatever it happens to be. And in doing that, you're addressing the chronic health care, but you're also addressing the, you know, at some point, that acute health care where you're falling skiing and all of a sudden you're trying to save your life or you're swerving out of the way of a deer or you know somebody's mugging you and you're, you're actually in a fight, you never planned it. So that's, do you have questions or comments or we'll end it? This came to bear taking a kayak off the roof of a car and uh -huh. a fall. Right. And it didn't turn out to be a fall. It turned out to be a roll. Right. And on pavement and came up fine without, yeah. without a scratch. So the could have easily just laid myself out on the pavement right. too. Right. Right. But these yeah. and who knows what. You know, my, my Gong Fu teacher said the only move I know for sure every one of you will use is a fall. And he didn't say it that way. He said, one thing I know for sure is that you're all going to fall. So maybe we want to learn that and get good at that. Because you're going to go over the handlebars, through the windshield, on the wet leaves, down the stairs, in the back back hallway. Or like Everybody's going to go down. You, you know what I mean? Like, you can't go to Ikea and buy anything that just has two legs. Everything has four legs. Maybe three if you buy an easel. Right? This is a weird design. <laughs> like, you're gonna go down. So let's practice that. You might not ever need to know how to do that elbow from Hungar. Fine. It's kind of fun to learn. But how often do I use these things to develop efficiencies in my life. I just keep using the closing door because we have this door here, but all kinds of different things. And I practice that on my farm because any given day, I'm digging, raking, dragging, cutting, climbing, painting, scraping, planting, and um, I'm going through those motions, but I'm thinking of Tai Chi Chuan. And then later in the day, I will, um, often then share those with students, but they don't know I spent six hours shoveling. They just say, well, now he's teaching this movement, you know? <sighs> okay.